Olá! Olá amigos. Bem-vindos a mais um VHS! É, é verdade. Desta vez estamos outra vez uh, à frente da câmara, não é? como não é costume. Uh, mas isto é sempre uma boa causa. Vamos, vamos fazer uma entrevista. Uh, finalmente, uh, finalmente. Sim, finalmente conseguimos fazer uma entrevista a Steven Kostansky. E pergunto a vocês, quem é Steven Kostansky? Uh, nada mais, nada menos que um miúdo uh, um de garoto, Toronto. Sim, que faz que, parte de um, de um grupo. Uh, que é os Astron Six. Exatamente, são cinco, mas chamam-se Astron uh, Six. Dizem eles que o sexto elemento é o público. É quem assiste aos filmes dele. É verdade, uh, está, está no site deles. E eles investem o tempo deles, uh, uniram-se para fazer produções low budget, filmes de terror, filmes uh, no fundo que remontam aos filmes de exploitation e de grindhouse, uh, que são aqueles filmes uh, que uh, percorriam as, as salas de cinema underground na América, aquelas mais low budget. Este, pod este podcast foi-nos recomendado pelo Ricardo Machado. Uh, que foi ver o, um dos filmes uh, que o, o Jastron Six fizeram, que, que esteve presente no Motel X uh, de 2012, uh, que é o Father's Day, uh, e foi graças a, a, essa, esse, a, a, essa, a essa oportunidade de ver o trabalho do Jastron Six que nós chegámos até ao Steven Kostansky uh, e ao trabalho que ele faz, Uh, que não, e... não termina só nas suas produções low budget. O jovem Steven uh, já, já trabalha num estúdio em Toronto que faz uh, trabalhos de maquilhagem, make-up, to, todo esse processo. Para, para, grandes... para grandes estúdios. Uh, trabalhou inclusivamente, esteve envolvido no, no trabalho de filmes como Resident Evil, uh, o segundo Resident Evil. E, 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 exatamente. E mais recentemente Pacific Rim, do Guilherme Del Toro. Eu disse que o segundo Resident Evil não é o segundo, é o Retribution, que é o último, que mais é o recente. Quinto. Exatamente, é o, o quinto. quinto da série. Uh, por isso vamos falar com vamos, ele, vamos, vamos entrar em contato. Vamos ver se ele está online. E, 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 vamos, online. e vamos começar é, a conversa. Acho que ele está aqui online. Está, está. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're making connection through Skype to Toronto, Canada, uh, to speak with uh, one of the Astron Six, a group of five movie geeks who I believe love the horror and gore genre and make their own grindhouse style of movies. Am I right? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Okay. Uh, his name is Steven Kostansky. Uh, the younger of the group uh, was involved in the direction of Manborg and worked also on Father's Day. Uh, and yes, has in yeah, special effects on Father's Day. Okay, and has interesting uh, credits on his work, namely special makeup effects in Silent Hill and Resident Evil. Uh, Stephen, uh, talk us a bit about your cu curious Astron Six work and why did you prefer to work together? Uh, well, the five members of Astron Six are me, uh, Jeremy Gillespie, Adam Brooks, Connor Sweeney, and Matthew Kennedy. Uh, we all met through a short film festival in our uh, hometown of Winnipeg, Manitoba, uh, which was an annual uh, short horror film festival. Uh, so we would all submit movies to this festival and uh, basically compete against each other. And one year we decided that we should team up because we had similar sensibilities, because uh, we all had a taste for uh, like. 70s and 80s, like, like you said, like Grindhouse, but also like VHS era uh, sci-fi action and horror films. But uh, uh, sorry, Stephen, uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 26. You're 26. Uh, um, but um, what was uh, uh, what is your main inspiration? Uh, when did it all started? Uh, like when did I start making movies? No, no, no. Uh, your 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 major inspiration, for example, Sam Raimi with Evil Dead, uh, I don't know, what was the, the movie or the director that uh, uh, put uh, everything in perspective for you? Uh, well, there's a lot of movies. Uh, I can't really just pick one. Uh, I have a very vivid memory uh, from my childhood of renting Terminator 2 and watching that and being mesmerized by it. Uh, but I was also a huge fan of the original Star Wars trilogy when I was a kid, uh, and uh, as well as Ghostbusters. So basically, any like big special effects heavy movie uh, yeah. from that era was kind of what what inspired me uh, I, to I, start making movies. I noticed the, in the 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 works that you have done, the cyborg and the mechanical. Uh, effects and uh, robots uh, and the future 
uh, has uh, a big impact on your on your work. Uh, is that because uh, of the origin uh, of Terminator and, uh, and the Star Wars, uh, the first trilogy? I'd say so, uh, especially the uh, the opening sequence in Terminator 2, the uh, the future war. Yeah, uh, that was something. As a kid, I would watch that over and over again. It was uh, it was a major inspiration for me. Uh, and I've always wanted a movie just to be 90 minutes of, of that, but it still hasn't happened, unfortunately. So yeah, that that and Star Wars as well, uh, as far as like the production design and uh, the miniature work, all the spaceship stuff. Uh, that always fascinated me. I like I have like an equal love for that kind of mechanical stuff, but as well as like creatures and monsters from stuff like you said, like uh, Sam Raimi type movies, like the Evil Dead movies, yeah. uh, Ray Harryhausen movies, like Jason and the Argonauts and Clash of the Titans, yeah. uh, and things like things like Aliens as well are, yeah. are inspiration and Predator. So yeah, any kind of big like creature feature. You're a big James Cameron fan. Um, did did you, you? Of course, you saw uh, um, Avatar. What what did you what did you think about Avatar? Uh, I had a lot of fun watching it in the theater. I actually have only seen it that one time, and I haven't revisited it since. Uh, but I remember liking it, and there were, I enjoyed the uh, robot knife fight at the end. Uh, I think I, I might have liked it a little bit more if it was practical instead of uh, CG creatures for everything. Okay. But uh, I still thought it had a lot of good like production design. Uh, I like the the robot designs, obviously. But uh, yeah, I really haven't revisited it since uh, since I saw it in the theater. I saw uh, Manborg a few weeks ago, uh, and I noticed most of the work was uh, shot on green screen, right? Or blue screen? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, it was blue screen for the opening war scene because everybody was dressed in green, but then everything else was uh, green screen. Uh -huh. uh, how it was to work with uh, mostly on, on, on the studio, right? How? Uh -huh. Yeah, by st studio you mean my parents' garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't. It, uh, but it, it still looks uh, good, and it's mostly a fun movie. But explain us a bit about the process, how you come up with this idea, and how the work developed uh, to make Manbar. Uh Well, I wrote it without having any real sort of plan as to how I would make it. Uh, I just knew that I really wanted to make a epic like sci-fi action fantasy adventure and uh, I had just finished my short film Heart of Carl which was the first time I tried using green screen and I was happy with how it worked out so I figured I'd kind of continue that process into into Manboard. Uh, originally the intention was to use more practical locations but uh, uh, as, as it turned out it was difficult to actually find places to shoot a movie like this, so I ended up having to do 99% of it on green screen. Uh, the, the, the scenes and the, the stuff that uh, appears on the background was your work as well? Yeah, uh, all those backgrounds were miniatures that I built uh, out of junk and garbage that I found. Uh, and then I import them into After Effects and then add like blinking lights and computer screens and stuff. Uh, so yeah, all the backgrounds were were built after the fact. I, I imagine that uh, in a movie that uh, resources to so many uh, special effects, uh, alien uh, or visual effects in this case, um, ninety percent of the work you d it's post production, right? Yeah. Well, we shot the movie kind of on and off over the span of a year. And then it was two years of post-production, uh, which was just me sitting in front of my computer every day, <laughs> working on compositing and basically trying to clean up the bad green screening as best as I could. So I can uh, ask you now uh, to tell us uh, uh, about your involvement in two big movies, yeah. uh, Silent Hill Revelation and Resident Evil Retribution. Retribution. Uh, well, I worked for uh, Paul Jones, who he's the... Uh, probably the biggest uh, prosthetics artist in, well, probably in Canada mm -hmm. uh, right now. He, uh, he, he did, uh, like, Resident Evil Apocalypse. Uh, he created the nemesis for that, 
as well as uh, Resident Evil 4. Um, he worked on the first Silent Hill. He, he's got a crazy list of credits. Uh, he started working uh, in the UK on the Hellraiser movies. Uh, anyways, he, uh, I was very fortunate to be hired by him. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun working on both of those. Silent Hill was actually the first time I worked for him. And uh, I was only on, I worked in the shop only for a few weeks, uh, so I wasn't really present for that much uh, on the movie. Uh, but you were involved in any monster, or can you tell us? Uh, I, uh, uh, I helped uh, fabricate the uh, the weird bondage outfits that uh, there's those hanging people uh, on the carousel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I helped make those their like weird outfits, which I've never done before, and it was weird that that was the first the first thing that I did when I walked into the shop was was make bondage uniforms. Yeah, but, and, and that that's very reminis reminiscence from Hellraiser. Yeah, well, that was my favorite thing was that everything kind of had this a little bit of a Hellraiser flavor to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it would be my dream to work on one of those movies. So, so I guess it's as close as I'm going to get. No, wh why don't you direct uh, a sequel? <laughs> I'd love to. Honestly, if anybody handed me like a franchise like that, I would do it in a heartbeat. Cause it, 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 did you saw the the last one, the last Hellraiser? I, I, I think it's the eleventh movie. Yeah. Or, or no, it's the ninth. It's the ninth. Okay. Uh, it, 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 it is all world, and nine is. It sounded like the eleventh, uh, but uh, um, it, it's it's horrible. I, I think it destroyed all the mystic of the of the series. Uh, well, the thing somebody other than Doug Bradley as Pinhead was just not a smart yeah, choice. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, did you met uh, Paul uh, Anderson? Uh, Paul W. S. Anderson. Yeah, exactly. No, oh, I never actually met him. Again, I worked in the shop at Paul uh, Paul Jones's company. Uh, so I, you know, like I did like a little bit of sculpting here and there. There's a lot of making mold, uh, like for the zombies, uh, those Russian zombies. Uh, Paul was nice enough to actually let me sculpt one of the background guys, so that was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, did, did I, you enjoy the movie Retribution? Eh, it was okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it has a lot of cool parts. I think. Uh, Maybe it'll get better with time, but in the when I saw it in the theater, I don't know if they had it, the audio turned up too loud or what, but I, it like gave me a headache because some of the sound is really, really obnoxiously loud. So I think I need to watch it again before I can really judge it. After Manborg, you, you did Biocop, a short film. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but I, I couldn't uh, see it. But but. Um, uh, from from what I read about it, uh, it's it's you continue on the on a, a, a cybernetic humanoid cyborg quest. Um, what what uh, are your um, goals in in the future on your next projects? To continue on this uh, kind of uh, work or try to do a different style of work? Uh, well, my hope is to someday. Uh, segue into making more like a more serious horror film. I think that would be a nice change of pace because it. I don't really want to get locked into this uh, into this style of filmmaking where everything is kind of like a parody of something else, and you know everything's. I don't feel like everything is about being like a B movie. It'd be nice to make something a little more legitimate. But again, at the same time, I love having fun making movies, so I want to make movies that are that are a little sillier and, and just, you know, entertaining, because I feel like people don't really make movies like that anymore, like movies that are just, like, fun to watch, but they're not dumb, like they actually put the effort in and make a decent movie. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've got a few things that I'm working on right now, uh, so hopefully one of them will get off the ground. We'll see. But anything you can tell us about? Uh, just, no. just, just to reveal a little bit? <laughs> uh, well, I am tossing around the idea of a Biocop movie, but we'll see what happens with that. Because I would like to do it. And uh, the, the Robocop reboot is... is uh, already uh, in post-production, yeah. I think. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe that I could pull... Uh, 
Have you heard of that company, Asylum, that makes movies? Hey, that, hey, you know, exactly. <laughs> I, I could, Biocop could kind of piggyback that Robocop remake, maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I saw on IMDb you have worked on Guillermo del Toro's next big blockbuster, Pacific Rim. Oh yeah! As a creature effects artist, uh, can we expect what can we expect from the, these creatures? Uh, have you seen any part of the movie? Uh, uh, no, unfortunately. And again, I was like, because I mostly work uh, in effects shops here, so I'm not on set. Uh, I don't really get to see like the movie coming together. I just kind of get told to build something and I, you know, and I sculpt it and I mold it and they send it off. Can you but, tell us uh, did they, did they uh, tell you to, to sculpt? Uh, I'm not allowed to really say anything, but uh, the stuff that I was involved with was very cool and uh, the, the team over at, uh, that was working for Mind Warp Effects and the team over there uh, I think did a really amazing job. Uh, building the stuff that they made, uh, and I'm glad that Guillermo decided to do some things practically because the movie is mostly CG, I think. But uh, it was exciting to actually get to build some uh, real, you know, creature stuff. So uh, yeah, hopefully it all makes it into the movie. Okay. Okay. Uh, one last question. Um, you live in Toronto, right? Yes. Um, and you work uh, near Toronto? Or The all the shops that I the shops that I work at are all in and around uh, Toronto. Okay, is it is it um, easy for you to to get to work uh, in Toronto, or you think it, it would be easier if you went to to California to LA? Uh, it seems like there's lots of work here. I mean, I used to live in Winnipeg where there wasn't really a lot of effects work. Like I'd maybe work like a month out of the year. And since I've moved out here, I've worked consistently. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy. Like, maybe someday, you know, California would be an option. But for now, I'm, I'm pretty happy here. Okay. 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 Uh, th uh, thank you very much, Stephen, for uh, chatting with us. Uh, oh, thank you, guys. I would like to thank also... Well, not to thank, but uh, to send the best regards to the rest of Astron team. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think we're done. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much again. <laughs> oh, thanks again, guys. It was nice chatting to you.